This is a video demonstrating the use of the robotic platform for repair of an umbilical and a ventral hernia. We proceed with a diagnostic laparoscopy, and upon seeing that the incarcerated component was a greater momentum, a decision was made to mobilize, free up, and reduce this utilizing the laparoscopic approach. This minimizes the number of robotic instruments that have to be used and thus helps make this financially more feasible. We notice that there's fat around the ventral hernia defect and decision was made to take the fat down. This will allow for better apposition of the fascial edges under direct visualization. At this point, the robot is brought in and using two robotic instruments, a cartier and a needle driver, we proceed to close our fascial defect by placing multiple figure of eight sutures. The stitch being utilized is a zero ethibon suture. While doing this part of the case, it is very useful to reduce the intra-abdominal pressure and uh, normally we drop the pressure to approximately 6. This allows for the fascial edges to come together with less tension. I find it useful to utilize a slip knot in order to approximate the edges of the fascia as this will take some of the tension of the edges as you will see in a moment. You can see how progressively the two fascial edges are brought together, keeping in mind that the intradermal pressure has purposely been decreased for this portion of the case. This is the last stitch of figure of eight, and afterwards the fascial defect will be completely closed from the intraabdominal perspective. A decision was made to approximate the portion of fat that was taken off the abdominal wall when visualizing the edges of the ventral hernia, and at this point it is being placed into an anatomical position. A mesh is introduced into the abdominal cavity. It is a circular piece of mesh. At the mid portion of the hernia defect, a straight keep needle is introduced. This will then be placed through the mid portion of the mesh and placed back through the abdominal wall. This will allow for the mesh to be tethered at its mid portion so that it doesn't move around when we're in the process of suturing the mesh at the edges to the abdominal wall.
one can see that the mesh is now lying nicely and not moving around. We will first place a stitch at the two opposite halves of the mesh and progressively begin suturing first the portion of the mesh that is closer to the camera as this is more challenging and later towards the end we will suture the portion of the mesh that is away from the uh, camera. As the suturing begins, we progressively place the suture first through the mesh and then through the interior dumbbell wall. And ideally, one should pay attention to make sure that the sutures are placed approximately equidistant from one another. As the first half of the mesh was sutured to the dumbbell wall, we then concentrate on the second half, which is further away from the camera. One of the main advantages of utilizing this approach is that uh, one doesn't have to use the tacker and this helps save a significant amount of money. In addition, while it's only anecdotal, it appears like the patients have significantly less pain after this approach with the suturing as opposed to having uh, 25 to 30 tacks going through the peritoneum. This is the completed view. Thank you for your attention.